Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to the Operation Freedom platform and our Operation Freedom channel. We have a very special presentation with a very special guest today, Daniel Brigman. You know, Dan is a very unique guy. He is a, um, he's a really a renaissance man. He, he wears a number of different hats. He is an author. I encourage you to check out his book, Forever 1776. You can find it at forever1776.com. He is the host of a fantastic radio show uh, that it, it does incredible groundbreaking work in exposing the deep state. PowerOurNation.com. PowerOurNation.com. And if that is not enough, he is also the CEO of, I believe, the, the best company when it comes to when it comes to food prep and water safety. You know, the, the title of this presentation is The Deep State is Cornered, Prepare Accordingly. And Dan has been a very valued guest on our Operation Freedom radio show for years. And I believe his input today is as, as important as it has been over the years, but maybe even a little bit more so today, because I believe we're getting close to some very large events. We have the Inspector General's report soon to be released. We're already seeing the deep state act out. And by that, I mean, if you look at what happened this week with Nancy Pelosi calling for an impeachment inquiry based on this Ukrainian goat rodeo, the deep state is perfect at mirroring. You know, Biden and his kid Hunter are the ones really who should be under the microscope and should have been for many years. Instead, they're focusing on this phone call. And let's face it, what Pelosi did this past Tuesday with this impeachment inquiry was political theater. In order to launch an impeachment inquiry, you have to have a full house vote. That didn't happen. The reason why this happened this past Tuesday is because on Tuesday, President Trump declared war on the deep state and the globalists. He was at the United Nations, and he said the following, quote, the future does not belong to globalists, unquote. Folks, that's a declaration of war. And when that happens, the deep state always acts out. False flags occur. And this is why I believe it's important for all of us to prepare accordingly. And this is the reason why I'm doing this special report with Dan Brigman, because he is, I believe, our country's expert when it comes to your food and water safety. As I said, Numana, N-U-M-A-N-N-A. Numana is the company that Dan founded with his family. He is the CEO, Numana.com. Dan, welcome back to the Operation Freedom Platform. Oh, it's fantastic to be here. Quite an introduction, Dave. Thank you very much. Well, well, thanks for all you do, Dan. You know, you take immense grief for all the things that you do. You take grief for your fantastic book that really outlines what our country was and should be about. You take grief for your great radio broadcast, Power Hour Nation. And frankly, Dan, it's amazing how much grief you take for being a CEO of a company that protects every person. Um, you, you get used to it a little bit, Dave. It is ironic when you put it in those terms, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, you know, Dan, you have your finger on so many pulses based on your work as a CEO, based on your work with the radio show, as also as an author. You know, Dan, uh, when, when you look at the landscape, there's a lot happening here. And uh, my concern, and you can tell me if that I'm justified, is that we're facing some potential huge events that's going to be disruptive to society. Well, you on your introduction, I'm so glad you brought up the United Nations and Donald Trump. That was, you know, in the history of America, as, as time goes on, that may be one of the greatest speeches we've ever seen. He went into the proverbial belly of the beast. He sat in front of basically the diplomats that are trying to destroy sovereignty throughout the world, uh, obviously pushing some sort of agenda, obviously working with the deep. I mean, all these these uh, fingerprints, these uh, fingers have gone all over the world. He went right into the belly of the beast and he said, as you quoted, the future does not belong to globalists, it belongs to patriots. 
And it was a declaration of war. I mean, even more so than his election, even more so than when he was uh, his first week in inauguration and he pointed at Jim Acosta. Do you remember that? That may be the most important thing he ever did. I don't know if people understand the, the psychological impact he's had. He pointed at Jim Acosta and says, you're fake news. CNN is fake news. And in that moment, America switched, or at least a large part of America switched. And got, you're right. He is fake news. The deep state. All these words came to the forefront. Well, now he just went to the CNN or to uh, the United Nations and said, the future is not for globalists. It is for patriots. Mm -hmm. You can obviously see if you've been you know, listening, obviously, to your program, your great audience, they know there is an ideological uh, not only ideological, a physical class inevitable in this. Globalism versus quote-unquote patriotism. In America, we look at you know the Declaration of Independence versus the United Nations Charter. That is what our sovereignty, our individual rights, the Declaration of Independence, uh, our rights come from our creator. We are seeing a change right now in China. This isn't speculation. It's called the Chinese Social Credit Score, which is a little bit of a misnomer. And it's a little bit of a fake-out. Because it's not Chinese. Just China is where it's being experimented on. Google, Amazon, certainly Facebook, the other tech companies, all, all the other platforms, they have took the wealth of America, the wealth that we have given them, the wealth of the Western world, and they have perfected some system and now are trying it in China. What does that mean? What, what am I saying? You ask me a specific question and I seem like I'm rambling. The class that is here and upon us is the class of your self-identity. There is nation states, there are corporations, there are governments, there are unelected bodies like the United Nations who want to characterize you as consumers, who want to characterize you as uh, basically assets or colonies or bees in a hive or whatever, not individuals. We hear the term social justice. Go, go to Google, type in definition of social justice. It'll tell you uh, equal distribution of wealth and opportunities along lines of so, so our, our society. And then it gives a sentence. It says, individuality must give way towards social justice. That's not, that's not me defining this. This is the definition that is being thrust upon us. This is the future. So when you say there's an inevitable class, it is here ideologically uh, um, our, our our concepts, our way of life, it is here. Now, we'll talk about periphery, financial, a lot of other things, but no question, the gauntlet is thrown, it is here, your self-identification and future are on the line. And in fact, <laughs> as the globalists become more panicked, more desperate, I, I believe they truly are focused on, and, and, their, and their, their, their business model has always been chaos. The chaos, I believe, with Pelosi bringing this up with this impeachment inquiry, which was pure political theater, as I mentioned before, is about civil disruption. It really, truly civil and societal disruption as a means of distracting people from what's really going on with the release of the IG report, with the, the, the takedown of many of these deep state players. But one of the, my concerns, Dan, has been on the financial scene about the, the deep state disrupting the financial system. And I believe there's already some indications that there is beyond wobbling within the financial system. If we look at what's called these, what the Fed has been doing in the repo market, they've been adding cash to the system for the past couple weeks now to keep it afloat. Huge amounts. On September 17th, they're, they've pumped in $53 billion. On the 18th of September, they pumped in $75 billion. Again, on the 19th, $75 billion. And then they uh, announced that they're going to be doing this $75 billion on a daily basis till uh, the first week through uh, October. Yet on the 24th of September, well, they actually added $105 billion. Dan, Dan, as we see the system starting to wobble financially and the deep state poking it, about them poking about the civil disruption issue, you know, it, it reminds me, obviously, uh, it reminds me of how things started rolling when the deep state tried to institute, if you will, their will in other countries, such as Venezuela uh, of, of recent note. 
Dan, do you believe that's an accurate assessment or do you believe that that's just, I don't know, conspiracy theory? Um, well, it's a conspiracy, but it's not a theory. That's what I would say. I would say you're 100% right. We don't need to look to Venezuela, although certainly you can. I think you have really described this very well, very accurately, given a stage for this. Let's go a little deeper. You can just look back, what is it now, what is it, 2019, 11 or so years, 11, 12 years, 2007, 8, 9, that period. Our financial system as we know it, the Bretton Woods system, the petrodollar from 1971, it basically, that system ended. It's just now we're just in that we've been in the death throes ever since then. We've, the can has been kicked down the road since then. Okay, there's a very famous moment, um, 2018, maybe the end of 2017, where Jim Cramer from Mad Money is on MSNBC, and he's screaming at the TV, Bear Stearns is fine. Don't take your money out of Bear Stearns. That's silly. What are you doing? You know, it, it's very. It's become very famous. And within, you know, just days after that, Bear Stearns started a monumental Titanic collapse. At that same time, a, as you said, the repo market, it's short for repos- uh, repurchase agreements. Uh, it's funny to use the word repo, like repossession. <laughs> right. That's kind of, yeah. it's kind of funny. But banks at night, they need certain amount of money in their accounts to justify purchases or justify whatever. I mean, it could be several different reasons. So they need money overnight. So banks sometimes go to other banks and say, hey, I'll borrow uh, $10 billion. I, I need it for a night and I'll pay you, you know, it's about 2% interest, 1.3, I mean, 1.75 interest, whatever. And uh, so they borrow it for the night. Well, just like in 2007, 8, 9, this happened the date, you know, last week, the week before, just as you mentioned. The banks went to this window, this repurchase agreement, this repo window. Many banks needed money, temporary money, and the money was no longer there the interest rates started to climb from around 2% to about 10%. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, you going to borrow a house loan, it goes from 6%, multiply that times five, and now a home loan is 30%. Would that be a shock to you? Yes, it would. It was a shock to the banking system. The money still was not liquid. Liquidity was not there. The key to this system is liquidity. If you have a fiat money system, there must be liquidity. The banks uh, have desperation. The Federal Reserve says, well, wait a minute, we have to step in. And as you said, now add this up, it was somewhere over $300 billion. This is just that we know of. Right. I mean, I haven't even mentioned FASA, uh, FASA B uh, 56, Statement 56. I haven't even mentioned that. That was passed a couple years ago. This is what we know of. In 2008, 2009, the TARP program that was passed, the total was about was eight hundred and a quarter billion mm-hmm. dollars mm-hmm. was given in TARP. America fought tooth and nail. There was a, a, a crazy vote around it. Eight hundred something billion, right? Ten years ago, eleven years ago, a week ago, ten days ago, the federal government just pumped in three hundred and fifty billion dollars, about half of what we argued about the TARP program. They've committed to another at least 700 plus billion, over a trillion. They are going to give more money and liquidity to the banking system in the, in within you know the time period we are today, seven days, 10 days before, 10 days after this, as we're talking right now, over a trillion, way more than the TARP program, no vote, no nothing, let's just keep this quiet, there's nothing to see here. I see pundits on the TV talking about this, they sound like Jim Cramer in 2007, 2008. There's nothing to say. Bear Stearns is fine. Bear Stearns is fine. This is a major, major crack in an indicator. We have at the same time uh, the ne- the negative yield, the yield, curve, the yield curve inverted. That means you could go get uh, or buy a bond. A 10-year bond was paying uh, more interest than a 30-year bond, even more short-term bonds. What that means that means desperation. That means confidence down. We have uh, also seen negative yielding bonds all over the world. Trump, uh, the Federal Reserve is on the Federal Reserve for America to lower their interest rates. Uh, to say this is precarious is would be an understatement. 
Well, and let's add to the fact, Dan, that J.C. Cole, a commercial risk analyst, recently prepared a memorandum for President Trump. And it's on, direct quote, the near-term potential for collapse of the U.S. food supply chain. And this is, this is where you come in and your company comes in with Numano. Because we've seen the ramifications. You know, when the deep state gets rolling with civil disruptions that they tend to push ahead, let's say, for example, in Venezuela. Uh, the, the, the first uh, domino that starts to fall is when it comes to folks' food and then water supplies. And I mentioned in your introduction, you've taken a lot of heat for founding a company <laughs> that focuses on just that. And I want to I talk about the heat you've gotten for doing this, uh, and and I also and I want to talk about the company, because when I survey people right here in the People's Republic of Ann Arbor, and I ask them, do you have an do you have any food or water stored away for potential problems? And I can tell you, Dan, nine out of ten people tell me. Uh, no, if there's problems, I'll just run to the store and I'll be able to get enough. Walmart Dan, that's, Dan this is, <laughs> yeah. this, this is I, I mean, this is crazy. Well, here's a bit. You mentioned my book earlier, and I'm going to show the cover of my book, Forever 1776. Great book. Uh, you know, it's not this stuff is not being taught in school. What What is America? What really is it? And the idea of independence. We celebrate Independence Day every year, you know, July 4th. It's a big deal. It should be a big deal. The, uh, the American ethic of independence is what you just talked about, is leaving our country. Well, Walmart's there. Corporations there. We think choices are freedom. Well, Walmart gives us choices, so therefore we are free, or therefore we have freedom. Well, if you're going to have disruption, if you we know that the deep state, that there is some overarching plan, the United Nations, to... Uh, co-opt the sovereignty of the United States. We hear the Democratic Party now wanting to take guns out of people. I mean, they're they're not even shy about it. They're aggressive no, they're about it. That's yes, they are. Uh, Mao Zedong, you know, he he would know. He said political power comes at the point of a gun. And mm -hmm. believe me, ladies and gentlemen, he would know. So the idea is not to keep people safe. The idea is power. And um, <laughs> I. I you have to be independent and this concept and people do criticize me and I get, well, dude, well, you're just trying to sell something. Look, look, you know what I'm selling? I'm selling freedom. Yeah, that's I'm offering true. Freedom. I'm offering choices because as we see disruptions and we see all these things and believe me, if things crack like they did in 2008, it won't be like 2009. No, it won't. I agree. It won't. It'll be more like 2000 or 1930, except worse because we still had, a dollar that had value in it. There is no value left in the dollar. So your choices in this plan, as I've looked at it, you've researched you, Dave, you're extremely sharp on this. You know, and you said disruption, that's their plan, chaos. And with that chaos, they limit choices. And your choices put you in the boxes. So you're, the American ethic, the American ideal, it, I mean, if we can't teach our children about the Bill of Rights, at least let's teach them about self-reliance and independence. Can we be independent? You must, I believe, you must, your fa for your family, for your children, for your grandchildren, you must maintain independence and choices. And with that comes food. You don't know how this is going to break. We can certainly, you know, it's not speculation. It's not theory. We can look at Venezuela. Mm -hmm. That's not, that, that, that's happening now. That's happened in the last 18 months. And that going on now, we see what happens there. We can look at uh, Europe during World War II. We can look at uh, the Depression here in America. Do you know that 7 million people died of starvation during the Great Depression in America? That was a huge uh, Russian scientist, huge study. 7 million. Did they look at 7 million people died of starvation in America? Nobody talks about that. No, they don't. So as you, as you see the class, the ideological class, and believe me, this is inevitable. How is it going to manifest exactly? Is it going to be physical? Is it just going to be uh, political? I, you know, that's hard to say. But it's an inevitable clash. Globalism versus patriotism in America. Globalism versus the Declaration of Independence. So then what is the solution? What is the idea? 
this isn't just about well let's have a gun and we'll keep a, we'll keep everybody safe no a gun says something about you you're sovereign you have power you have choices food says something about you you have choices you have freedom you have opportunity uh, you have gold and silver sponsors at your at your uh, uh, radio station or radio show uh, that gives you opportunity and choices mm-hmm. so so that's that's how I would answer that and the the criticism I get I, I'm so convinced of this and I see it so clearly it's like I said this on the radio the other day on the power hour I said you know there's that weekend when going from summer to fall there's that weekend where it's you know, 95 degrees one day, and then the next day it's like 70, and you need a jacket, and at night it's cool. It's like, oh my gosh, it's like changed like that. It's like the season has changed. You can feel it. The season has changed, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And we're in a different dynamic, and we're in a different time. And uh, to ignore this is, uh, you know, foolish, I think. Well, what, what, you know, Dan, and we've talked about this before, you know, people have insurance on their homes. They have, hopefully, have health insurance. They have insurance on their cars. But they, but when it comes to insurance on your food supply and water supply, folks think that that's kind of a bunker mentality. It, it just doesn't add up. Well, think about what you just said. Think about what you just said. We buy the corporations, and you know, not, I'm not saying it's not bad to have house insurance, but think about it. The corporations are fine forcing us. Even the government will step in and force you to buy car insurance. So they will force you to buy insurance for quote unquote assets for things. They will force you to buy insurance for things, but they ask you when it comes to insuring you life, which, you know, your life, who you are, your family's life, they don't care what you do. And they want you to then to trust them. Well, Walmart will be there. Think about, think about that logic. It's, it's again, it's an idea. It's a concept. You must use the corporations and you must buy an insurance insurance policy to insure things. But your life, just leave it to us. Don't worry about it. We have you covered. I, I, I don't like that uh, paradigm. So, Dan, let's talk about in, in, insuring folks' life from a food supply and water supply because this is something that doesn't get spoken about. And when you do speak about it, when folks do speak about it, they kind of are almost embarrassed a little bit to talk about it because, well, you know, they go to their family gathering and their their family reunion, whatever it might be, a holiday event, a birth, and they start talking about this. And Uncle Wally says, uh, you know, that's 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 over the top. I mean, that's really bunker mentality, conspiracy theory, and you know, just don't don't talk out loud about this. We need to t- speak about it because it truly is the protection of folks. One of the ways in which the deep state gets control of people is that in times of crisis, what do they do? People need to eat. They need to drink water. So they, they try to control those mechanisms to, to, if you will, control the masses. And it's a way to, if you will, sever the independence of individuals. So let's talk about how folks ensure their food and water supply because this is critical. Well, let me let me back up real quick and, and say a quote. And this may not seem to fit, but believe me, it does. There's a the the, the book Gulag Archipelago mm-hmm. by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Mm-hmm. He talks about there's a very the very famous the most famous part of that book is he talks about being in the camps, how they rounded up the people who were you know against the party line or the thinkers, and it's just oh how we burned in those camps, just wishing that when they came to round us up, that we would have hid under stairs with sticks, with rocks, with anything, dude. that they knew, that the people who came out there knew that if they came to get us, that they may not return home to their families, how they regretted that situation. Hindsight's twenty twenty, And I'm going to tell you, and that, I used, that was a very dramatic example, but I think it's appropriate. I believe with everything I see, history tells me this. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a problem. I'm not a prophet. I'm just... I've done a lot of research. I've been in this industry a while. I've seen a lot what's going on. These, everything you've described has happened uh, in different scenarios in this, in this country and world many times over. There will come a time, if you're not prepared, that you will be like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, and you'll say, oh, I wish in, 
you know, September 2019 like it is right now. I wish that I would have done something. I wish I would have taken action. It's not hard. It just It's an idea. It's a concept. What am I selling to you? What am I offering to you? What is Dave offering? You know, the name of his radio show is Voice of Freedom. This, this information is not to scare you or to put you in panic or to entertain you even, although it does maybe do, it does all those things. It's to instill and incite freedom, independence. And so you think about where you live. Michigan, you know, the, a lot of your audience from Michigan, uh, all over the country, think about your environment. In Michigan, you can throw a rock and hit some body of water, some river, some creek, some, some anything. To me, if I'm in my house, I want some sort of water. I, I don't like to store a lot of water. It's difficult. It's costly. And I don't like you know keeping it in the plastic bottles forever. That's not necessarily good either. I like water filters. And where I live, like Michigan, uh, I can get water readily available. I can find some creek. And if you've got a good filter that you know that you can trust, you can use it. Simple, gravity-fed. You just pour the water in the, in the top of it, and the water filters down. And then you have... Better water than you're drinking now, especially, you know, Michigan, Flint, Michigan. Everybody understands this. Right. right. Water that's better than you're drinking now that you just got out of some muddy creek. That's true. Uh, the Duraflow, Duraflow filters that we have on Numana.com, highly recommended, extremely tested. Uh, they'll even take out fluoride. They'll take out um, all kinds of things. You should be using them now for your mm-hmm. tap water, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, that's water supply. Now, you may not live where there's water available like that. I still get the filters just in case you don't know what's going to happen, and they're also portable. So then maybe you do need to store a little bit more water. Uh, if you have a swimming pool, then you can use the filter to filter the swimming pool also. That's another big way. So the food, you know, we sell family packs, defender packs, organic family packs, GMO-free, no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, those kind of things. We, When I first started getting into this, I saw what was out there. and Frankly, I was very disturbed because the food didn't taste all that good. And there was a lot of things in it. I, I didn't want to eat. I tried. I don't want my children to eat. And so we thought we could do something better. We, we started out with that idea and we have. So food storage that's in the packages. Uh, if you have water, if you can boil water, this is easy to easy to fix. And it's portable. It lasts 25 plus years if you, you know store it well. And uh, it's always going to be there. Everybody knows, no matter what the government tells you about inflation, everybody who goes to the grocery store, everybody who has to live in this country knows that there is inflation. So you buy stocks, you buy bonds, you buy gold, you buy silver as an investment. Well, think about an investment of, of food. It's going to sit there. It's good. It's high quality. It tastes good. My children ask for it. Mm-hmm. And we have new man of food over here periodically, especially my wife wants to make something quick. It's great. We go camping. Great. There's no emergency and we still eat it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do the same at our house too uh, it's fantastic right. I mean it's great uh, so you're not going to waste it the food will always be there so how can you lose so when you when you the big hurdle is people the mindset and say oh that's crazy well the mindset ladies and gentlemen as you're listening to this you're seeing all the different aspects of the environment around us the financial system around us Trump going to the United Nations the impeachment uh, debacle. I mean, show, like you said, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. And the Democratic Party sent a letter last year to Ukraine uh, that they needed to open up the investigation because they uh, are afraid it was going to interfere with the Mueller report. Mm-hmm. The Democrat, we know what the Democratic Party did just last year. Right. You talk about interference, it's, it's ridiculous. So the idea is independence, freedom, choice. And uh, yeah, that's that's what we need to have. Well, and 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 and, and you, you brought up a couple things about the Numana products, um, GMO free, uh, no no corn syrup, no fructose, no. And, and and this is the thing when I look at other products, Dan, um, and and you mentioned the different packs you have. M- many of the other companies that do this, y- you get a, a a ton of breakfast stuff, right? But you don't get the lunch and dinner and the high quality meals, and and you not only provide food, but it's a high quality product that that is um, 
it's not a breakfast dependent type of existence you would live on if you had to crack into the food supply that you provide. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I it's almost be, it's so logical to me. I, I almost take it for granted. When we first started, I mean, really, we started this company with my wife. It was in our basement, and we'd go to trade shows and, and what have you. And w- there was n- nothing could replace that experience because customers would come up to me, ask questions, and they would tell me, have you thought about this? Here's what I'm looking for. And from all those experiences, I mean, really, the, the people, you, you listening, you have told us what you want. You don't want some sugary drink mix. You don't want a ton of oatmeal. You want a little breakfast, but not a ton of breakfast. You want mostly lunch meals and dinner meals. That's what you want. That's what we've done. You want organic. We're the we're the first food storage company to put out a full organic choice uh, uh, along the board. We're the first one. I think we're still the only one that has you know. Or we have organic powdered milk. We have hormone free powdered milk. Organic chicken. Organic uh, family packs. You can even go to that level if you want. So that's what you've told us that you want, and we wanted to be different. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, apples to apples, if you're going to compare apples to apples, were exceptional value, very high quality, mm-hmm. stores neat in these buckets. You can take it out of the buckets and, and store it if you have limited space, or you can stack it in the buckets. It's fantastic. I, I'm very glad you brought that well, up. You mentioned sir, the storage, too, is key. You know, um, you've uh, Numana has gone the extra mile with how you store things because – I can tell you in looking at other products from other companies, uh, you crack into that that bag and guess what? Uh, you better eat all of it because there, none of that's going to last. And your storage system is far superior. Well, you know, a big thing is number 10 cans. And you got some big number 10 can and there's 100 servings. Well, once you open that, you're not going to eat 100 servings unless you're, you know, feeding an army or a platoon or something. Right, right. You're not going to you're not going to use that. It's going to go bad for. You. So we have more individual bags and uh, uh, 6 to 10 servings and with a resealable top. So you it's 5 mil and the bags are 5 mil. They're over engineered. Mm-hmm. I mean, these we've thought these things through. These are the things that you said were I I've almost taken these for granted. I'm very glad that you brought it up. And the buckets are easy to carry. Here, I there's a bucket set right here. I'll show you a bucket. There's the organic uh, bucket right there. As you can see, you know it's easy to carry. It's square. They stack. It's really not that heavy um, for the amount of food that you get. So it's very simple to use and simple to uh, store. Uh, very important. Superior. Superior packaging. Well, so here's the, so Dan, I, I always, here's when I get feedback about your, your segments I do with you on the radio show. Um, a, a hurricane hits, the wildfires hit, the uh, tornadoes hit, the floods hit. And I hear from our listeners saying, you know, I listened to Dan Brigman months ago. And I ended up getting some water filters, and I ended up getting a bucket of the of the of the food from Numana. And uh, I didn't know if I'd ever use it, but I just had it there. Well, all these folks said, you know, when we were evacuated for the hurricane, for the fires, for what, you know, the restaurants were all closed, but we took our bucket with us and our water filters with us. And while everybody else was having trouble getting nourishment, we were fine. Yeah, that's so, stories like that, I mean, they just warm my heart, really. I mean, think about all that we've done, all that we've been through. I mean, to, to, to think that your, your product um, and everything that you thought through, really, that's what it's all about. You, you just described what it's all about for us. And uh, it really warms my heart, something like that. And my concern, Dan, is that Everyone in our country is now facing a potential hurricane, fire, tornado event as it relates to the deep state. Because as we started this out, Dan, I truly believe they're cornered, they're panicked, they're desperate, they see their, their power and control mechanisms fading. President Trump, this past Tuesday at the United Nations, essentially declared war on the globalists. We have the Inspector General report coming out. They're acting out politically by this goat rodeo of an impeachment inquiry, right? But the bottom line is, is I think this is only going to escalate from the deep state standpoint. And 
I thank you, Dan, for providing a lifeboat through Numana.com, through your radio show, Power Our Nation, through your book, Forever 1776. You provide a huge lifeboat, you know, mentally, right? Uh, 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 cognitively through the show, but also physically in what you do through Numana.com. And I encourage folks to go to Numana.com to take a look at those water filters, to take a look at those, the, 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 the food supply buckets, the food prep buckets. It's an investment in yourself and your future and a means of defending yourself. Another means of defending yourself. As Dan mentioned, you can have, a, you can have lead and a means of delivering the lead. You can have gold. You can have silver to protect yourself financially. But you also have to have a means of protecting yourself and your health and your welfare with your food and your water supply. And what Dan has provided and his company has provided through Numana.com, I believe is imperative for every American. Well, I, I thank you, Dave. And it's great always be to work with you and our relationship. It's I really value it. I really value your audience. And I would say, you know, you, you, you kind of have speculated about the deep state. I would say, put this in an esoteric terms, ladies and gentlemen, for a second. Good versus evil. You know, we believe uh, in America, it's the American ideal, that we're endowed by our creator with certain rights. We're given dominion. The power is with the people. Our government became that. Okay, so the struggle you're seeing, if we're going to just separate this discussion, a good and evil discussion, they are coming. Somebody is coming. Evil is coming for what? They're coming for the power that is invested in you, not only lawfully in America, but spiritually in America. Make no mistake. You are in the crosshairs. What is the future of this? What is the goal? You are the goal, my friends. You are the target. And the more power that you keep and more options and choices you have, they will not be able to overcome you. They will not be able to overcome America. They will not be able to destroy the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. It will stand because it will live inside you. And uh, I love your audience, Dave. I really appreciate you. I want to thank you for what you've done. And anybody listening to this video, just to let you know, if you go to Numana.com, you go to checkout, there's a place to put a coupon code. Put in the coupon code JANDA, J-A-N-D-A, -A, JANDA. You're going to get a discount. And uh, check out all the options. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Everybody should have at least one family pack. I mean, at least mm -hmm. one, something, something. Give you a little bit of choice. Well, and I can tell you as a parent, uh, it's one of the first things when my, my kids moved away from home that they, I send them in the mail. I send them a Numana pack. And I can tell you as a parent, I feel, um, I, I, I feel more secure uh, about taking that action. So, Numana, N U M A N N A dot com. For your radio show, PowerHourNation.com. And for the book, Forever1776.com. Yep, you can get it at the Power Mall also, PowerMall.com. Dan, I'd like to thank you and your entire team for everything you have done, are doing, and will do. You provide an incredible an incredible foundation for folks' safety and health and welfare and freedom. And I thank you for that, Dan. Folks, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Until next week and next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.